Thanks, man. स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम सैल्यूटेशन टू श्री रामकृष्ण हु इज धर्म से स्थापक स्थापक मीन्स एस्टैब्लिशर ऑफ रिलीजियन ही इज द वन हु हैज शोड द पैथ फॉर ऑल अस इंडिविजुअल्स हाउ टू reach up to the a- absolute salutations to shri ramakrishna who is sarva dharma swarupin sarva dharma swarupin he is this he is the embodiment of all religions because he he found the absolute through all the different paths and said that they are all true and salutation to shri ramakrishna who is avatar varisht who we regard as the highest of among the incarnations like he is the absolute who has become like us to teach us so today's topic is as it was announced by chat uh shri ramakrishna at dakshineshwar um it was a little different the way i thought it cuz i didn't think it was shri ramakrishna uh in dakshineshwar or rather we were to discuss about dakshineshwar itself in context of shri ramakrishna um shri ramakrishna spent uh, a major part of his life in dakshineshwar and uh, starting from the beginning as a teenager he started his practices which which for a more than a decade he went through various practices each of which could could be a, a topic for an hour easily and then he stayed in that higher state for another dozen year or so um and then it was the next phase where he actually he just dis- showed the path he all he found all his disciples and he established founded the this, this um order so uh instead we are going to focus on dakshineshwar itself cuz that's where he did all his leelas and uh if you see um m cuz he wrote all about the leela of shri ramakrishna he initially started with a a biography of of shri ramakrishna which the trans, which, which as nikhilanand ji translated he had also a, a biography which was not exactly like m but then m went on to describe in the first chapter dakshineshwar itself you know and i don't know why that was not translated in by nikhilanand ji because i think that's so pivotal when we do leela dhyan what is around the the setting is so important even when we dream there is a setting in which all the dream, dream happen when we meditate uh like in a, when we study all the tuesday lectures we are told like imagine that you are right there with sri ramakrishna and all the devotees you are also there so i think that's uh, today that's what we are going to do uh describe dakshineshwar and hopefully 
Um, I have seen, I have heard of many of our devotees going there and uh, I have actually spoken to at least three of them who went there, did the pranams to the Kali temple and they didn't know what else to do. They kind of came back and they regretted, oh, how come I didn't go to Sri Ramakrishna's room or Panchavati and all those places. So hopefully uh, one of the idea is to, to go through all the places. So uh, maybe next time when, you, when we go there, we know where to go. And also when we go through the gospel, we can meditate on it better. So, about, you know, Tuesdays we, we, uh, we have God with form, right Charlie? Tuesday, God with form, and Friday is God without form. Right. <laughs> but that's what an avatar is, you know, who is the link between the absolute and we, the devotees, we are kind of caught up in the multiplicity. And absolute as such is, is uh, the simplest thing. Uh, we talk of unity, you know, oneness. And so that's even if you tell a physicist, you know, they love very simple things. Truth happens to be very simple. E equals MC square and the Ma Maxwell's laws, which are so simple. That's where the beauty is. So if a uh, Vedantin philosopher were to tell them the formula for, for the absolute truth, that would be, you know, truth, T, or the grand unification, G, and G is not God, that would be just T equal to one. That's as simple as it gets. And the physicist may say, what kind of a, th you know, formula is this? There is no space, there is no time, but that's the problem, it's, it's so simple that doesn't matter what space, what time, it may be right here, right now, it's one, unity. Or it may be the Big Bang when it happened, equal to one, or whenever creation happened 4,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago, with all the fossils, then also, anytime, anywhere, the truth is one. It's that simple and conceptually it's so easy, but uh, like we say, ekasvarupam is unity, but it's also us, our our own nature is that unity. So that part becomes so hard, like, because we are complex beings, uh, we cannot understand unities. Multiplicity, we understand, you know, I am a unit of consciousness. We all are individual units of consciousness. That experience we can know, but then realization becomes a problem. And that's where an avatar comes in and that's a weird, weird concept that the absolute has become another unit of consciousness, another being, out of compassion, telling us what to do. So we know what, we can also realize that link between us as individuals into that grand unity. Um, but weird as it, it is, you know, that's where the Leela part really works. The thing about it is, is for a devotee, it, it works. Thinking about God, meditating on God, we become meditative. So that's where Leela is so important. And today we are going to talk about Dakshineshwar. Uh, so let's go a little bit over the, the history of, of Dakshineshwar as it happened, because in one, it started with Rani Rasmani Devi about 1847. And she was a rich widow 
she had a uh, lot of wealth, but she was a very intelligent lady, very uh, fearless, lot very powerful lady. And and then there was Sri Ramakrishna, who was in 1947 was just an 11 year old, playing around in Kamar Pukur. So where is the link? There is practically there's no link between them, but that's how it was supposed to be. Rani Rasmani, she wanted to go for a pilgrimage to Varanasi. In those days there were no railways, so she had a big entourage of lot many boats, um, lots of expenses. And as she was getting ready, or some say as she had already gotten started, she had this dream. And she was a devotee of, of Mother Kali. And she had this vivid dream where Mother Kali said, why are you doing all this? Make a temple right here in Kolkata and I'll accept your, your worship. So she canceled the tour and set out to find a suitable place. His son-in-law, he didn't have a son, uh, but one of his son-in-laws, he was he interested him to find a suitable place, and it's five miles north of Kolkata, like upstream of Kolkata. They found this place which was used as a cemetery and a Muslim cemetery, and there used to be a Muslim holy person who had stayed there, and it was thought that that place is very propitious. So it took um, eight years. So in 1955, uh, this temple was, was ready. But there was a problem that she was of a lower caste and people were concerned that she cannot be a owner, her worship may not be acceptable. Meanwhile, Sri Ramakrishna, he, his brother, he had already lost his father. His brother um, came to Calcutta to earn some money and Sri Ramakrishna end up, ended up being with him. And as the turn of events would be that his brother was appointed the worship, worshiper of this temple, he had found a solution of her, her, of this fix. And Sri Ramakrishna followed his brother. His brother was in, in bad health, so he was appointed uh, initially as as a worshipper of the Radha Kanta temple. We'll come to that. What is that? And then, uh, his, as the brother passed away, he became the worshipper as a teenager, 19 year old. So, so it's not about Sri Ramakrishna. We, we are going to go over basically the chapter of the first chapter as M had uh, dealt with it. And he was basically, he gave a tour of this place. So uh, I'll kind of follow his, his, his cue. Um, so this is the map, so since Charlie said we are going to high tech today because of the new setup. I have a high tech pointer to. <laughs> I should uh, use the clicker. So that was Rani Rashmani. So I hope people can read this. If, if not, you know. Please feel free to come forward. And I, this, so this this will remain the same. So you know, because there'll be many pictures. It's basically a pictorial pictorial tour. Uh, I'll point out 
what is being shown there and where is the camera and where it's pointing to. So this is the map of, of uh, Dakshineshwar temple grounds. This is the Ganges. The direction of north is like this. So Ganges flows in a north to south direction in, in, in Kolkata. So this is the temple ground. And the tour will start somewhere over here. So this is one of the older pictures of, of, uh, of the temple grounds. Um, so this is taken. Oh, I should move this. I have to move it. Move this. Okay. So this is basically the camera is out here, somewhere over here, and uh, you can see. Um, the temple complex. Um, I'll keep going forward, so. Okay. So, people from, the, from Calcutta would be taking usually a boat. You know, that would be the easier path because walking five miles may be a, a big deal. So as you walk up to Dakshineshwar, you, you take the boats and you dock the boats right here, and this is kind of the main ghat. You ent you're entering the temple complex. So this is called the Chandni, the entrance place, this one. So and on both the sides, you can see the Shiva temples. There are six Shiva temples on, on either sides. And as you enter the courtyard, out here, the camera is somewhere over here, so we can see directly the temple. This is the main temple. Further up, so your that is further away is, is northern on its north is the Radha Kanta temple. So uh, Rani Rasmani, uh, it was a little strange because uh, usually the temple complexes for uh, a divine mother wouldn't have uh, a Vaishnav place, meaning Krishna and his consort. So that was one of the temples on the northern side. And then there is the temple itself. And on the southern side is what is called the Nat Mandir, meaning uh, events can take place out there. It's a uh, multi-purpose space kind of thing, like, like the way we have downstairs. Okay, so now this is just the other way. We are looking south. And we can see the, the Shiva temples on the right. So the camera is facing like this. So you can see all the Shiva temples, the Chandni, and uh, the Ganges would be on your right. So this is kind of, if you were to take, instead of taking the boat, if you had taken uh, uh, the land route, that's how you would have entered the, the complex. So even now, the main entrance, if you were to take a bus, you would come through the main entrance like this, all the way, and this is the entrance to the to the courtyard. So that's that's what you will enter once you enter. This is what you see. So this is the Radha Kanta Temple, right here. This is the deity uh, that Sri Ramakrishna, he started being a worshiper in this temple. 
and you know we know the story about this this temple itself uh, uh, about this uh, this idol basically had broken down at some point of time because as the idol was being taken to put to sleep somebody slipped in a in on the wet floor and the idol had broken down and Sri Ramakrishna himself had repaired that idol. Uh, that has since been replaced. So right now what we have is, is for decades it, it was not replaced, but recently it has been replaced. So the one that Sri Ramakrishna had fixed, it's still on display somewhere. If you go, you can look for it. Uh, just by the side, just by the side. Actually, if you, uh, Swami Chetanandandiji has done a translation of that particular chapter, uh, and it's in God as we saw him. I think in the, it's in the appendix. So he describes uh, what very detail how you, as you enter the, the, the temples, how things are placed and what. But since we are doing a pictorial here, it's, you know, picture is much more powerful. But it's worth, you know, looking, going through it because uh, many descriptions are important. Uh, and also this is where, by the way, in this, uh, this is where the picture that we have of Sri Ramakrishna that we, you know, it's most uh, used for worship is where Sri Ramakrishna was, had settled down to have his picture taken. So you probably know that incident pretty well, that he didn't want his picture to be taken. So the guy who came with the camera and photographer, he was quite disappointed because the previous day he seemed like he was interested. But the next day when he came, he was not interested. He just walked away from his room and went to right here, uh, probably at the entrance. And uh, then, sh then Swami Vivekananda, Narendranath, he had to play a trick with him. So he went up to him and he started discussing high philosophy, doing, during which he just went into samadhi. And then Narendranath, he said, quickly come, take picture now. This is your chance. So that was here. So this is the, the Kali temple, uh, right at the entrance. So this is again, we are looking north to south. Uh, the camera is somewhere over here, right in front of the Nath Mandir. And that's how Sri Ramakrishna would have entered. Uh, and the deity is not visible, so if you go to Kali Mandir, it's very hard to go, like have a, you will probably, if you go later on in the morning and the line builds up, you'll probably get, you know, a few seconds to, to see. And, and to see inside is going to be a problem. Uh, but let's see how things are. Ah. For one thing, I, I wanted to take this picture because usually what the picture that we see of, of the, the deity, Mother Kali, is this is the one. And people don't have a sense of how it looks like a life-size or maybe bigger than life-size picture, uh, uh, idol, but actually that's not the case. It's pretty small, like maybe this big. And uh, well, our prime minister uh, of India, he had gone there He's kind of a devotee of Ramakrishna mission. So, um, so one can imagine Sri Ramakrishna, he had, once he started, once he started, I mean, that's where kind of all hell broke loose. I shouldn't use to say hell broke loose. It's, um, I don't know. 
all the Vedas break loose to him once he started worshipping and he kind of went into a trance and this is the picture that this is the idol that came alive to him like over the years he could uh, uh, you can imagine Sri Ramakrishna you know uh, worshipping and then he would uh, actually see her as as uh, as alive she would she would take like for example a little string and put her next to her nose I mean that's if people used to die and they were wasn't sure if the person has died or not they would put that very fine thread and if the thread moves means that that person is still breathing so he when he put that thread next to his her her nose nostrils it it, 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 it would move and uh, and I, he, he would talk and have conversations with her, you know, uh, beautiful descriptions. Uh, he would like cuddle with her, sometimes like hold her chin and say, hey, sweetie pie. Or uh, sometimes he would argue with her. There is, there is a description uh, much later, like M has, not M, somebody has uh, put his uh, reminiscence that uh, when he went there and Sri Ramakrishna took, took him inside and he started circumambulating the mother and he said it was, it was not like a ritualistic circumventing. He could feel that it's uh, he's go as though he's holding the mother's sari and like a little child going around like so. Uh, and this picture we don't usually get to see because this is somewhat inside what's inside you, you usually we just see from um, I don't know maybe 15 yards away uh, so you can imagine that there was this sword hanging on on the wall and, and Sri Ramakrishna uh, when he couldn't f find like couldn't uh, have the vision of Mother Kali at some point he just said it's not worth it living is not worth it and he just rushed up to the wall and grabbed that sword and was about to kill him. And then, right then and there, he had the vision of, of Mother Kali. And it was not like you know, there was some picture, some, some movie I saw in Bengali where the mother comes, hey, here I am, and he says, oh, mother, are you sure? It's nothing like that. Like, and the description is there, you should read. Uh, in the Leela Prasanga is there, or, and in the Gospel also he says how the walls started disappearing and then all he saw was huge waves of, of light rushing in towards him and then finally consuming him. So it, it all just happened right here. Um, I had a chance to, to go inside. Last time I was there, like one of my nephews, he said, I, I'll take you there inside because he, his in-laws were, uh, they knew people. But just so happened that my plans changed. Uh, I couldn't, but one of our friends, she went there with another nun and she actually had the chance of going inside and, and standing there for some time. So if you go there and, and find yourself lucky, maybe you'll go inside this temple. Um, so that's the idol, she's standing on the Shiva that is facing. So we are looking north to south right now. Uh, the entrance would be something like this. So Shiva is, his leg is pointing north and he's looking up. So this part is what I was saying, the Nat Mandir, and there are some descriptions of M seeing Sri Ramakrishna pacing up and down all by himself, and he thought, wow, this is a, like a lion, all alone, moving, pacing up and down. Okay, so, um, I'll just quickly point out the rest of the, like we saw this picture, right, where 
these are all the Shiva temples. Um, before I move into, this is basically what, what is shown is, is around Sri Ramakrishna's residence where he stayed for 12 years or so, which is at the north west corner of the premise. premise. Um, but apart from the t Shiva temples, these are, you can see, the kitchens. These are, this is usually the, used by um, uh, the offices are here, and then storage, and puja preparation room, and all that is uh, along these lines. So now this is this is important. Um, I think I should. I'm just so as you come from this Radha Kanta temple over here, so this is Sri Ramakrishna's room at the corner. There are this is a we'll, you will hear about this semicircular porch oftentimes in the gospel, uh, which is which has a, a direct view of the of the of the Ganges. So there is one door leading into this porch. There is another porch uh, on the north side, directly north. And two on the sides. This is called the northeastern porch, and this is the southeastern porch. So the northeastern porch is outside of the complex, and the southeastern porch is inside the complex. So, moving on, huh, okay. So this is this view. You are looking at from that side, uh, from the southern side towards this. So that, that you see from here, the porch that is visible at the other end is what would be the southeastern porch. meaning this one, this porch. And from there, as you enter, you, will, you can enter into Sri Ramakrishna's room. So you go, you go straight, and then you make a left, you will enter Sri Ramakrishna's room. Okay, so this is again a view from the Ganges. Okay. Yeah, this is again a view from the Ganges. So you can see Sri Ramakrishna's room out there on the left of all the Shiva temples. North of that, uh, that's the corner of the temple premises. Uh, and the, the circular porch, you can see that. All right, so this is the view of inside the Sri Ramakrishna's room looking south, like the camera is facing inside. And then on the right hand side, you hear of the two beds, the bigger cot and the smaller cot. So bigger cot where Sri Ramak would be usually sleeping, taking a nap, and then he would be sitting on the smaller cot usually talking to people. I really looked around to find a picture, which would have been important, from, fi from this side, meaning looking north, because this doesn't have any of the uh, important pictures. So, for example, I would have loved to see this corner, uh, all the doors. So the, there are four doors, one, to the porch, one to the northern veranda, and two to each of each of the northeast and southeastern porch. So, 
And this is the corner, like ju just as you enter from the circular porch into Sri Ramakrishna's room, like the Ganges out there, that's the corner where Sri Ramakrishna had done the worship of Holy Mother. So if you, uh, Lila, if you read the Leela Prasang, it describes very clearly where that's where the Ganges water is always kept. So Sri Ramakrishna used to take the Ganges water from that corner. Uh, but we, I couldn't find a picture of that. So next time you go to Dakshineshwar, you'll, you'll make sure you just sit there and take some time to assimilate all that. Huh. So this is the northeastern porch. There are two separate pictures, two different views. So, so for one, the ca you are looking directly into Sri Ramakrishna's room. That's looking into going into Sri Ramakrishna's room, like this one, right here. And the other view is basically this is the kuti. This is outside the temple complex. And this is where, this is also very important because Sri Ramakrishna spent, again, uh, like a dozen years, was it a dozen years or so? Um, all the sadhanas that he did, you know, we, because we are so used to describing M, this, this house, we don't know that Sri Ramakrishna had spent equal amount of time in this place until his nephew died and then he, he had to move to this place because they had to do some painting, wash, like what they call whitewashing. And then... Exactly. So, so what, yeah, but that's, the sequence of event was such that he was moved temporarily to this place. And then when he was asked to go back, he said, I can't go back because my nephew had died and that's too painful. So if it's okay with Mathur Babu, I'll stay there. So, and Mathur Babu of course said, yeah, yeah, you can stay there. And that was the very next year uh, Mathur Babu passed away. So, uh, so the reason I said, uh, mentioned this is Sri Ramakrishna was right after his marriage when he came back at 25 year old or 24 year old. Uh, he was still living in, in, in the Kuti, but he was pacing up and down this corridor. And Mathur's point of view would have been something like this, watching him from the Kuti. And then he had this magnificent view uh, that as Sri Ramakrishna is pacing away from, from that room, he didn't see Sri Ramakrishna as Sri Ramakrishna, he saw him as Mother Kali. Just the same image that we saw, that in the temple, she was walking in that form, walking like this. And then as, she, as he turned back, he saw, saw the Shiva. And of course, he thought that something's wrong, so he blinked and probably rubbed his eyes many times and then he continued to have this vision. So he ran up from, from the Kuti all the way to that place and fell at his feet. And of course Sri Ramakrishna was totally flabbergasted. What are you doing? Like there are people watching, please. And he wouldn't, he, then he explained what's, what went through him. So. And this is also the place uh, when Narendranath came for the first time, Sri Ramakrishna, like if you look at the left picture, went out, took him out of his room, right? And that was the time when it was cold. It was month of December or so. And all because there were cold air coming, they had put shutters of some kind. So there was privacy there. Uh, and uh, and that, that's where he said, oh, you are the Narayana, I know who you are. And he started feeding him and all that. That happened right here. So this is an older picture. I kind of like older pictures because 
you have a sense of time what has happened and probably when the photograph was taken that also has happened this picture is probably old compared to when things really happened so as you can see it has changed quite a bit and this is the other veranda the southeastern veranda which is inside the temple complex this is the only picture i could find i wish there was something uh, a little better picture but this is where m for the first time imagine that's the door that you see is, is sri ramakrishna's room so the camera is facing this way and sri ramakrishna was again it was a early spring so he was having his beard trimmed right outside and you can see that it's probably you know facing south so there would have been uh, sunlight right there sitting they might have been sitting right there and that's where Sri Ramakrishna was asking him hey where do you live are you married and he said yeah and he said oh no he's married so all that conversation the first chapter that happened right there and and now you can see the camera is somewhere over here you can see that porch on the right the circular porch on the right and this is the northern porch they call it so there's a lot of mention of the, of the northern porch because when the guests would come in when the Keshav would come in they would just walk in through that front that's the main entrance uh, on the left so this one and they would enter through this entrance and this is you can see this porch again from here and and on the background you can see the Nahabat uh, where Holy Mother used to stay and, and Sri Ramakrishna's mother used to stay up there um, now I, I again like this picture because this has as you can see how things have changed uh, yeah this is kind of a newer picture but this is how it used to be a long time back. So this is the, this is that, uh, the circular porch where you hear Hajra sitting there and meditating and, and, Sri Ra and, and Narendra Nath would come out there and have talks with him. That would be right there outside and, they, and Narendra Nath would say, ha ha, this is, you know, uh, oneness. We talk about oneness, so everything is God, right? This, some these utensils and whatnot, everything is God, ha, 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 ha. And Sri Ramakrishna, he just walked out through this door and said, hey, what are you guys talking about? And then he touched Narendra Nath. And then he had this experience of, of unity, you know. Like we hear Sri, uh, uh, Sri Ramakrishna say that when I was in the temple mother had showed me that everything is one like that was way before he actually had uh, this experience with Tutapuri when he used to be a priest and he said I could mother showed me that this experience that everything is is that oneness everything is conscious uh, so for Narendra Nath he, he could ridicule that but when Sri Ramakrishna touched him that experience just came to him and then he he just was in a fix he couldn't he went back home he couldn't eat because the food and he couldn't see the difference he couldn't carry himself like that you know he, when the carriages would come towards him he wouldn't have the tendency to move away because uh, he again saw us, the, the unity so that happened right here when Sri Ramakrishna came out and and touched uh, Narendra Nath. And of course, I'm just picking out one or two that just comes to my mind, and uh, there are, it's all replete with descriptions of, of, of events. 
Ah. So this is the kuti. Uh, this is a, oh, online <laughs> search. But uh, this is a very modern version of, of the kuti. So I didn't find too many of such pictures. But uh, uh, you can see there is this projection. Um, so this is the wing. The, on, there are two floors. On the, on the bottom floor, on the western wing, uh, so the Ganges is kind of, uh, as you see, is behind you, behind the camera. And that is where Sri Ramakrishna st stayed there and did all his sadhana. Um, that place is open. Many people don't know that, that if you can actually go in there. They have a little altar out there. Uh, nice pictures up. up. Uh, they haven't modified it too much and I'm happy for that because there's a tendency to put a temple and you know it's all modified and they have quotations from uh, Leela Prasanga and all that because uh, that's where he used to come downstairs. it's downstairs yes downstairs on the western wing so like there are descriptions when he used to come and his body used to be burning and then he used to lie down on the marble floor to cool himself so this is where uh, you know, after marriage he came back. This is where he met Bhairavi Brahmani. This is where he used to stay and just walk out uh, from here to the Panchavati is a little bit further north. So all that happened right here. Uh, and what we, and because later on, just before Holy Mother came to meet him, that's when he moved. So Holy Mother and all the disciples, they came to the, our familiar one. But all that, prior to that, it was the Kuti. So that place is open. You guys got to go check it out. Uh, and I also wanted to main mention, uh, you can see the previous picture again, that Nahabat is is right there, so you're looking north, due north of Sri Ramakrishna's room is the Nahabat. That's where Holy Mother used to stay. Uh, on the first floor is that, you know, it's octagonal shape. And there's a little veranda which goes around that uh, room. That room and the veranda used to be usually Oftentimes, again, there were shutters, so she, Holy Mother had to peek through them to see what's going on in Sri Ramakrishna's room. Um, and the cooking would be going on a little to the right, right outside the building. And her, of course, her room was uh, the storage, and you can imagine, you know, Adbhutanandaji would go there and help her out, help her out in her cooking, and, you know, Golapma, and uh, who was the other one? Um, Gaur, not Gaurima. Yoginma, right. So they would be staying with her often. And that little place, again, I think now they have put a, an, uh, an idol. So uh, Chetnanandaji, in his book, he has kind of uh, criticized the way they handle things. Because now if you go, you will not see this uh, smack in between these two places right here. They have built a temple of Rani Rasmani Devi. So they, it's like big one. And uh, there is, um, so it kind of blocks the view. And, and Chetnanandji said, you know, the good way of handling things, uh, paying the tribute would be, you know, to make this whole kuti into a nice museum. Uh, and not just here, there are other places also where uh, similarly it has been handled. So um, so I kind of like these older pictures because they kind of depict, even though it's, it's probably changed a lot. In the descriptions you'll see, uh, in M's description, how, let me go back to the previous,
So these are all, you know, how M describes all the garden, and he, he has meticulously described where are rows and all the different flowers that are growing. So flowers here, 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 and around the kuti, these places, all these things are like basically, that's why it's called flower garden, temple garden and flower garden. Um, so going forward now, we are going to go and see the Panchavati. So this is how it used to be. Uh, this is probably around the turn of the century when this picture was taken. See how dense it is. And uh, so this is what we are looking at. And I believe this is, I'm not sure, this is probably from the Ganges view, like meaning further from, from the, uh, closer to the Ganges you're looking. And behind is all wooded area. So now what it looks like, something like this and even thin, even less so. So previously it used to be like this. And when Sri Ramakrishna came to live there another 50 years ago or so, this used to be a thick jungle. And uh, that's where we have the description that the place was uh, undulated and Sri Ramakrishna would go behind. So when all this description, so by the way, when, sh when uh, M starts describing the chapter, he starts using a present tense. Like now we are entering into this uh, garden where uh, there is a holy man who stays there. So as though this is 1880s, early 1880s. Then he goes into past mode, like as though Sri Ramakrishna is not there anymore. It used to be like that, it used to be like that. And then by the time he concludes the chapter again, he comes back to the present mode, like uh, the Sri Ramakrishna is out there because then he has to carry that narrative for forward, like what happened next. So, um, so when Sri Ramakrishna during that time it was like this thick jungle. So then he would go down uh, into somewhere over here, which was then all wooded. And then there was a Amloki, a plant under which he would like take off all his clothes and take out his uh, sacred thread and just put it all aside and, and, and just sit down and meditate. So hard to imagine, but we can see how thickly, uh, and that is Panchavati, where a uh, lot of, you know, uh, events have had happened. Totapuri used to live there for, for 11 months, he stayed there, uh, and a lot of descriptions of, of, you know, merriment, all these young disciples would hold on to those big vines and swing and all that lot descriptions are there. But uh, this is, I guess, a somewhat more recent picture. And that's the, next to the Panchavati, what is it called? Uh, meditation hut. Uh, used to be uh, clay and hay, but now it's concrete. And the, the lot of, you know, M had come, wanted to come and stay with Sri Ramakrishna like about two years after he met there. And during the Christmas time, he said, I want to come stay with you. Can I stay up there in the Nahabat? Holy Mother was not there. And, uh, and Sri Ramakrishna's mother had passed away long before that. So he wanted to stay up there. And Sri Ramakrishna said, you want to stay there? Uh, should be fine, but I would rather you stay in that hut because so many people has done so much sadhana there. And of course, we know what happened between him and Totapuri. That you, like Totapuri came and you know he couldn't meditate because mother's form, which he loved so much, would come. And every time he wanted to meditate on the absolute, that form would come. And then Totapuri slashed his forehead with a with a little piece of glass and said, meditate right here. And then he could meditate. You know, he, he describes it, how he just broke that image into two and then that's it, he merged into the absolute. 
So this is that little place and M also came and stayed there. You know, like he would stay up in the, uh, up on top of the Manahabad, but early in the morning, way early in the morning, he would come to that place and meditate and sing. And, and he describes like what song he was singing and Sri Ramakrishna was watching through that window uh, with, with emotion and all that. So uh, now it's all barricaded and and the Panchavati is in a bad shape, so they're trying to revive that plant. It's, it's, it, this is a much healthier version of what it is right now. Uh, hmm. So now we come further north. This is the, this is at the edge at the, of the premises. This is a, this is that a famous bilva tree. Uh, this is where Sri Ramakrishna did lot of sadhana with Bhairavi Brahmani uh, when he was about 25, 26, 27, around that time. And on to the right is, is uh, M, much later. Uh, he came and took a photograph right next to that. And you will see his picture, like in M's book. That so this is that picture, and this is the most famous picture of M. But that's he he sat down right next to that. Uh, so you have to walk down along all the way to the edge, and this is and right next to that, and also you will hear a lot of times, t you know, Sri Ramakrishna walking past. As you walk further, you go past. the Nahabat where Holy Mother used to stay, then the Panchavati would come, meditation hut, and then he would go further. This used to be all vine trees, like pine grove, Jhautala. This is where people would go, relieve themselves, to attend nature calls. Uh, now it's, it's like all buildings, and it's none of that is there anymore. Um, so, what else? What did I miss out here? I guess that's about it. I'm, uh, before I think I had a This is Google Maps. <laughs> so right now, this little thing is, is, the, is the temple complex as it is. There had, right next to the temple complex, there is a bridge. Um, on one side, it's called Vivekananda Bridge, on the other side it's called Nivedita Bridge. Uh, but it, this is, goes across, so if you were to come from Belurmat, Belurmat is further downstream, across the river. So you, either you take the ferry, the ferry either will come here, south of the premises, but more so, the smaller boats would go right Ah, that was the thing we, I didn't talk about, was the ghat where Holy Mother used to, uh, used to take bath. And that is between Nahabat and that ghat, between Nahabat and uh, um, No, it's it's called uh, it's called Bakultala Ghat. Yes. So this is where Holy Mother would come, take her bath, and she stepped on a crocodile, <laughs> right here. 
and she just came back rushing and she was so scared and uh, Golapma. Golapma said, how is it that you, you are, uh, you give non-fearness to everybody and you, you are fe fe fearful? And she said, don't make jokes. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Yes, Shambhu Malik's house. Uh, uh, let me show it right here. So Shambhu Malik's house. Why don't I make it free? Go to this end. So Sh Shambhu Malik's house. You know. Uh, so Thakur would walk out. Walk out of the temple premises. Go around. This is that road, and his his house was here. So this is where he took that little bit of what is it called afim? Uh, what is it called in opium. opium? He took a little bit of opium, and then he came out, and he couldn't walk because he didn't tell Sambhu Malik that he was to take that opium. So it was technically stealing. So. No, no, because, yeah, he was a medicine. Medicine, right, right. So there was no, no narcotics here. It was just a, a pill, <laughs> yeah. So so that would be right. I'll actually, why don't you? No. No. I, I think you have to go out because the premises were... Uh, unless I have imagined it wrong all this way, all this time. So let me just uh, go to a satellite view here. And make things bigger, hello. Okay, so this is, this is that road, Jeti Ghat. This is the other Nahabat. So there were two Nahabats, one right Okay, let's see, can we see the premise? This is the little thing is the premise. There is the other Shiva temples. So there is this Nahabat where mother used to say, and then there was, on the southern side there was another Nahabat where all the descriptions are there, that there were songs going on early in the morning, late in the evening, sometime in the middle, they would play Shahnai. So right now, this is very nice place. If you end up being in this bigger, this is all the bigger ships come here. So if you come down, you'll see the Nahabat right here, and then you'll see Shambhu Malik's house, right this one. And then the path goes around the corner, and then you enter into the temple premises. So the description is like that. As he en enters and tries to go back to the temple premises, he is drawn back. So that would be this path. Um, and besides that, I think I'll just end up right here. So hopefully next time we go to Dakshineshwar, we'll have a better idea. And also importantly, next time, you know, one of my friends would always say, start reading the gospel. And I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe now is a good time that I start reading the gospel again. and. Uh, spend half an hour every day so um, so hopefully we have an idea as to what is M is talking about what place he's talking about um, so we'll have we can meditate on Sri Ramakrishna's Lila much better that was the whole idea thank you so much Closing prayers. Questions? Two? Okay, now Swami is here, so I can always delegate it to him. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, when I went to Dakshineshwar with Ram Krishna, he told me there were monkeys usually in the uh, Panchavati. Were there back when Sri Ramakrishna was there? Were there monkeys there? 
Which Sri Ramakrishna? You went with Sri Ramakrishna well, too? The one who just here, <laughs> I went with him. Okay, so he's talking about a friend who is, Shri, who is Ramakrishna. His name is Ramakrishna. Ram Krishna. Okay, Ram Krishna. And were, th were there monkeys when, when Sri Ramakrishna was there? Right. Yes, of course, we have, we see, the, we have. How did he deal with that when he was in the party? Okay, so that brings to a nice, uh, he's giving me this cue. The first uh, vision that Sri Ramakrishna had in waking state, mm -hmm. at, as he was going to, So, Sri, Ma Sri Ramakrishna was walking along this path. And then as he came to Panchavati, he saw a monkey. Oh, no, no, sorry. He saw the, a beautiful lady, gorgeous uh, and divine lady, looking lady, walking straight. In, uh, and she had a, like a sad countenance in her face. And then he saw a monkey jumping out of the Panchavati and suddenly rolled in, in front of that lady, like doing pranam as though. And then it occurred to him like, oh, who I'm seeing is none other than Sita. And then he wanted to go rush up to that lady and fall at her feet, but instead that figure rushed into her, into him, and he just fell uh, and so as the word goes, then he had the same smile as Sita, so. So yes, there were monkeys. Shrikant. Why his room has so many doors? Well, it was a corner place, so being like, it's kind of like a penthouse, you know, you have to have a, a, a view of the Ganges. Uh, one, and it has the two corridors, so you have to have access to those corridors and one place to receive people. So. Yeah, cross ventilation is import, important, yeah. Huh? was yes yes yeah i know uh, during sri ramakrishna's time we there are descriptions of all the four doors leading to the four places so that's true um, and yes there used to be uh, floor has been changed which which people are not happy about uh, and there were so many descriptions of of uh, pictures on the walls that M said they are still there, but now I don't see them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know where. Yeah, that was in Kashipur, yeah. Um, so I think we are run out of time. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that in, Sh in Chetnanandiji's book you have that picture, yeah. Closing prayers. May the divine, who is father in heaven of the Christians, holy one of the Jewish faith, Allah of the Muslims, Buddha of the Buddhists, Tao of the Taoists, great spirit of the Native Americans, Ahura Mazda of the Zoroastrians, and Brahman of the Hindus, lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May the all-loving being manifest himself unto us and grant us abiding understanding, all-consuming divine love. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Oh. Uh.